so I just wanted to show you um, another bookbinding technique um, as well as showing you an example of a graphic zine. So if you're hoping to bring in a book into your graphics project, just some of the techniques that you could experiment with. So for this scene, I looked at the A-level exam title, Food for Thought. Um, I originally looked at um, a trend within the food industry at the moment, which is transparency. So people asking where their foods come from, what it's made of, and even who's making it. So I began by just looking at some adverts that we used that kind of explore my theme as well. And artists as well but then I wanted to add and show you how to add a bit more of your project and um, into your book and make it a bit more personal so this illustration was done by Kathy who's an upper six um, down on the risograph printer in S2 so using one of her illustrations printed in gold um, this is printed on like metallic metallic black and it also works really well on matte black so I've printed this on one side and then on the other side I don't know if my camera will pick it up in fluorescent pink I've printed a loyalty card design so it just says collect 10 stamps so if you're thinking about um, your project if you're looking at food um, creating your own restaurants your own apps and you're thinking that you want a book to to come with it that is something that you could think of i also wanted to work with more interactive pages so this is a page an a3 page that i've pleated so that when it lies flat it looks like a plastic bottle on a plate and it says there's more plastic in our food than ever before and then when you open it up the gaps are filled in with plastic bags so that's something that you could work with on the other side, I wanted to again use this pleated um, page and work with a design that would fit with it. So on Photoshop, I experimented with um, glitching type. So this is the word stretch, stretched all the way across my pleats. And then it just says COVID has stretched the food industry to breaking point. So that's also something that you can think of, page design. I also used taglines and logos that we would see around our high street so this is eat fresh which is the subway tagline and then um, a picture of vacuum packed orange which I thought was quite interesting and then again just experimenting with different techniques on photoshop a different type layouts so for this book binding I'm going to do the bow tie binding. So to start with, you need to make sure that all your pages are together. If you're working with a smaller fold like this one, just make sure you catch it in when you secure your book. So I'm just going to bulldog clip that. Okay, and then I'm ready to bind. So I'm just going to show you a technique that I used to manipulate my type on um, Photoshop. So I've just typed out the word stretched here um, and I'm going to go to filter to so make sure you're on the right layer after rasterize your type and then go to filter liquify and it should come up with this. So there are tools down the edge that you can um, try. So the bloat tool pluck a tool but I'm just going to do the twirl tool today so you can play with the pressure so I'll show you one when I use it on the type it doesn't really affect it at all whereas if you go to 100 you can see it start to manipulate and warp your type you can see it starts to split your type as well so you can do this over and over and over again So it really does start to warp it. Something else that I try to do with the same technique is use um, black and white. So let's just see what kind of thing that does. So make sure you're on the right, on your type layer. Go back to a smart object. And then just doing the same thing again. So 
that comes up like that. You can also experiment with doubling up your types. This is one that I did um, earlier. So I'm just going to show you a, something else that you can do with this type experiment. So I'm just going to duplicate, duplicate it by pulling it down to this plus box. So now I have two. I'm going to grab the type that's below layer and then start to put it underneath so it's almost being stretched even further. And then if you go to your filter and filter gallery, you can start playing around with the type underneath, so the underneath layer. So adding things like glowing edges, play around with the edge widths and the edge brightness. Let's see what that looks like. And then you can place it under it if you like, or even that on its own is quite nice, putting that on top of it. And let's try another one. So glass, distorting its texture could look quite interesting. That's quite nice because it adds, if I get rid of the other layer, it adds um, a texture on it so it almost looks like it's being warped and um, the text being damaged. So that's something that you can also play around with. But that's just a way of coming up with different type um, designs of your own, which is quite fun. So for this book I have decided to use um, this colour embroidery thread just so that it links with my front cover. Okay, so you just grab your needle with your thread in. We're going to start at the top and then just go through the first hole. Okay, make sure you leave a tail on the outside. And then just come out your second hole. Okay, so with this technique, we're going to skip um, the next hole and go through the hole. So that'll be the fourth hole we go back through. So you are missing one and then go through the next one. And then come out the next one. Okay, and then do the same thing again. So you're skipping one in the middle to create like a long dash. And then come back through. Okay, and then just repeat that until you get to the end. Okay, so when you've got to the end, at this point, you can change your thread um, to a different colour. Um, that will make more sense when I show you what the technique actually is, but I'm just going to stick with my original colour. So with your needle, you need to go into the centre of your book and find that middle piercing that we missed. So in the middle of our big dash and then pull through. So you want to make sure, because I'm using the embroidery thread, that you don't pierce the thread. And so you, I've just brought mine down below it. And then go over the dash and then back into the same piercing. There you go. And it creates almost like a little bow tie. So with the embroidery thread, um, because it's quite fine, you can't really see it. So I'm just going to go over it a couple of times, maybe twice. 
again moving all my embroidery thread out of the way so I'm not piercing it. There we go, so it's a bit more to find with two, so I'll leave it at two and then go into my next one. So you're just finding your next um, empty piercing, so it'll be in the middle of these dashes. And again, going over it twice. You could even do it so that some of the dashes have more um, going over than the others. So my previous one had two, this might have one, or you could even do three. There we go, and then to the next one. And then you just continue this same technique until you get to the end. There you go, so that's the end of the binding. So I just need to um, secure my loose thread. So I'm just going to pull this thread back through that hole. And then bring it back through into the middle. And then you can just knot these two together. and then you would cut those there you go and then that's the end of your binding Okay, so this is the finished book. If you're thinking about um, packaging, you can think about the way that you present your final book. So I looked a bit at food packaging. Um, so I've come up with this idea of how, it sh how my book will be opened. So again, using Kathy's Cath um, illustration, I've printed onto tissue paper and then just used a sticker to secure uh, the packaging together. So that's something that you could think about. And then this is the final book. So you've got your nice neat binding through the middle.